Oh boy, part 10. Here we go once again. You all know what I'm gonna say. Five Nights at Freddy's is a humongous series filled to the brim with complicated lore that nobody has quite put together. The creator, Scott Cawthon, leaves little clues here and there in the form of tiny details, and we overanalyze them to the point that they don't really matter because a new game or book has come out. And that's what we're doing today. Greetings gamers and welcome back to Top 10 Gaming. I'm Connor Monroe and this is the Top 10 FNAF Tiny Details You Don't Really Think About Part 10. Jeez. After all this, we will have covered 100 FNAF Tiny Details, not including any other list on this channel. So be sure you're sticking around until the end for some more shady business dealings at Fazbear Entertainment. Okay, let's do it. Minute 10 Grandfather Clock One of the biggest pieces of evidence for Dream Theory was the grandfather clock sound at the end of your shifts in FNAF 1, 2, and 3. Since why would you hear a grandfather clock in an office? Which makes sense. But thanks to Nightmare Freddy's April Fool's Day mechanics, we know that Dream Theory is false. So why are we hearing a grandfather clock? I mean, there very well could be one in the office, but like, I mean, like, it's not impossible, it's just highly unlikely, but it could also just be that we change the alarm tone on our phone, and we have an alarm set for 6am, so we know the minute that we can get off the job. I can understand that, especially given the horrific environment this job places us in, and no, I'm not talking about the internet, I'm talking about the job in-game, although it does work for both of us. And at 9, Bonnie goes missing. Aside from being a great name for a children's book, I'm claiming privileges, Scott, that doesn't really help the fact that after sister location, Bonnie just kind of vanished, not including FNAF VR, AR, or Ultimate Custom Night. Ultimate Custom Night since it's a dream, FNAF VR because it's just all the games, and AR since it's not really a game, it's a service, at least in universe. And Bonnie isn't in the main lineup for security breach, and instead has a bowling alley with no known appearances otherwise. So what happened? When Chica was left out of sister location, we got Chica's party world as an excuse, but does Bonnie have the same sort of thing going? Did they swap between the events of sister location and security breach? Like, what on earth is the deal here? Where did Bonnie go? And at 8, why did they make the games? We still don't know what games are the ones created by the Scott Cawthon stand-in in the FNAF universe, but we also still don't really know why either. We hear that he made them on his own to capitalize on the tragedies, which makes sense, but then we also have Tape Girl who tells us that Fazbear Entertainment hired this guy to make the games so that people would, wouldn't be so apprehensive about returning to their restaurants. That had to have been the way things went, because even we as fans of the series want a real life Freddy Fazbear's, so I'm sure that in universe these games have the same effect, whatever the games may be, which would also explain how they were able to expand, which is why that makes more sense than Scott doing it on his own, at least Scott's in universe counterpart. Why did you have to do this though, Scott? Like, why must you torture me? I mean, it, it's incredible, and you're, you, it's great storytelling, but, but why? And it's seven layout. Thank you to YouTube user Octoling for the comments on part 9 pointing this one out. In their comment, they pointed out that FNAF 4 and FNAF 2 have very similar layouts, with two entrances on the left and right, with a big one in the center. These being the two side vents in FNAF 2, and the doors to the hallways in FNAF 4, and the big door in FNAF 2 being the big closet in FNAF 4. Now if this is because the base coding is the same, at least for the office section, or if it's for another reason is unknown, but it's a tiny detail that you don't really think about. So, uh, it belongs on this list. Does it have bigger lore implications? Maybe, but unlikely. I genuinely think that it's because the code is so similar that he might have just copied and pasted with different textures, and instead of lights that we can activate, we end up running to the doors. But either way, it's something to chew on. And it's six eyes. We all know that Freddy starts moving closer to the end of the original game, and as I've said before, he wasn't really originally meant to move. However, on the cameras, you still don't really see him. It won't be obvious like it is for Bonnie or Chica, but instead you'll see two white dots as his eyes. But like, how is this possible? When he does show up at our door, we can see that he has normal animatronic eyes in his sockets like Bonnie and Chica do, so how are there only two dots that are really able to be seen? Especially when they're being blocked and no other animatronics do this kind of thing. It's so weird, and I just don't think that it has any like bigger implications, but I still want to know why these white dots come from behind the eyes. Are they that bright? Because those eyes are meant to disperse the light that would normally come from the LEDs, if there are any LEDs behind the eyes, so it's strange in my opinion, and I'll never really be satisfied with the answer, so I'll just move on. Halfway through in at number 5, Nightmare Mangle. From what I understand with the Nightmare animatronics, a few got added in a Halloween DLC, but only Nightmare Balloon Boy was canon. I may be wrong about this, and it has been a while since I saw that, but to my understanding, Nightmare Mangle was not canon. 
We determined this had to be because Crying Child hadn't seen Puppet or Mangle yet, but had seen Balloon Boy. However, we know for a fact that Crying Child has seen Mangle. He appears in his sister's room as a torn up plushie next to her bed. There is no stuffing by her bed, which is ironic given the series, but it's still kind of weird that Mangle wasn't deemed canon if it was there. Shout out to Avery Truesdell for spotting this and putting it in the comments of part 9. So if Crying Child does know what Mangle looks like, how is that not canon? Scott went out of his way to say that Balloon Boy was canon, meaning the others had to not be canon, right? I'm so damn confused. I can't, I can't do this anymore. No, I'm only halfway through. And in for FNAF IRL, I've made multiple videos about how a real life Freddy Fazbear's could exist, and may even be coming as early as 2023. But as I was writing this script, I thought, what if we were getting a real life FNAF crossover? Now, this might be a little outlandish, but bear with me here. We're hoping to get a real life FNAF in 2023, since that's when Fazbear Frights opens in universe. But it was all speculation and the power of positive thinking. No actual evidence, and Scott even said himself that he wouldn't do it. But are we being set up to think that it's not going to happen, and instead getting one of the most ambitious crossovers of all time? Well, the Fazbear Fanverse Initiative may hold some clues. This is a group of fan game creators that Scott has funded to help make up another game. Five Nights at Candy's 4 being the most popular in this group. But this collection of fan games also contains a new version of the Joy of Creation, the Ignited Collection, where if you're not familiar, you play as Scott Cawthon himself being chased by ignited versions of the original animatronics, basically more withered, withered versions. And since the FNAF multiverse is now a thing thanks to these games and the books, could Scott make this into one of those universes and use that game as a bridge between worlds? It would kind of make sense, but it would also be absolutely terrifying. Kill 3, Chris Afton. There are a lot of names for Crying Child, and I'm here to set the record straight. None of them have been confirmed. Crying Child isn't even a canonical name. I'm pretty sure it's just another name for the character because he was always crying, or was mostly crying. It's just another name that we gave him. The names I've been seeing recently are Chris, Norman, Evan, and Kyle, and I don't know where most of these came from. Evan comes from the security logbook, and most people seem to think that this is canon, but it's not. They've also had to really struggle to get the N as far as I could tell, so if you want to believe that, currently their name is Eve. Chris is random, and I'm pretty sure came from a FNAF-themed music video. Same thing with that car accident that apparently killed the mother. They're not actually canon. Norman isn't anywhere to be found either, and the same thing with Kyle, because I made that one up. But I'm certain that there will be at least one person who, when I said that, yelled, FINALLY, or something along those lines. Crying Child does not have a name. It's not a tiny detail, but it's something that a lot of people don't really think about. So if you have a detail but put it in the comments with a name that isn't confirmed, it could be about anyone, so I really tend to scroll past those. But I had to set the record straight, okay? No canon name for Crying Child. If you want to call him whatever, it's fine, but don't use it as evidence or say that it's confirmed or canon because it's not. However, if they have solidly found evidence for all of the letters of Evan, please send the link to me on Instagram so I can and, like start looking around and, like so I can actually see that but uh, until that point it's it's not it's not confirmed it's even not confirmed after I see it it's not like I'm the one confirming it but you know what I mean and it's too passive mode shout out to Robert Vazvensky for posting this in the cons of part 9 as well this really helped me why is it that out of the two shadow animatronics in FNAF 2 there's one that's passive and one that's aggressive and why is Bonnie the aggressive one Shadow Freddy's just chilling, slumped over, not really moving. But Shadow Bonnie will just come in and absolutely torment the hell out of you by flickering your lights and just overall being a tool. But why does this theme remain even after this game, with Shadow Bonnie being aggressive in FNAF AR as well? Is it just the spirits creating these figures that have different personalities? Or is it a different emotion that created these A to begin with, or B, making one more aggressive than the other? I don't know, but it's hella interesting. Cause like, if Agony caused Shadow Bonnie, but a different emotion caused Shadow Freddy, it would explain why Shadow Freddy is, is passive. Finally, in number one, Oblivious. In a previous video, multiple videos in fact, I've said that the company doesn't care because they're sending and replicating the suit of the dude who caused them to have a bad rap in the first place in FNAF Special Delivery. They're replicating Springtrap and they're just sending him on his way, going like, yeah, go kill more kids. However, a commenter pointed out to me that when discussing Springtrap in the AR emails, they refer to Springtrap as an older Bonnie model, which I find confusing because, well, how do you know it's an older Bonnie model? but then you call it Springtrap in the app. 
I know that it's because we know him as Springtrap and that's like our universe reason, but assuming we were in the FNAF universe, we would be using the app that at least looks similar to the one that we use, if not the exact same, minus the whole animatronic fight sequences, because those would be happening in real life. And if Springtrap is listed as Springtrap and not older Bonnie, Fazbear Entertainment needs to explain. Fazbear, explain! What do you mean it's Arkansas? But also, why would you not recall the animatronics and just go get them? Or have somewhere people can deposit them? Or company-wide shutdown switch? You should have thought of that by now, especially after how many things have gone wrong. There we have it, friends, the top 10 FNAF tiny details you don't really think about, part 10. I can't believe that we've covered 100 of these things and we're still going. Like usual, if you have any ideas that I haven't mentioned, be sure you let me know in the comments or shoot me a DM on Instagram at the Cheese King 3 because this is getting really difficult and is causing me great mental anguish. Hooray! <laughs> uh, no, please help. Please, if you want more of this, send, send me more details, please. This took me ages. Thank you all so much for watching. I have been and shall remain Connor Monroe, and I'll see you in another video. <laughs> Aside from being a great name for a children's book, really? Cry. <laughs> Mm-hmm.